tale that gripped the world in 1927. One man, one adventure. And the ever-looming prospect of death. Picture travelling 26,000 kilometres from London to Melbourne in Australia in a vintage vehicle that was not built for off-road. And we're talking about a car with bone-shaking suspension on roads that were never meant for vintage cars. This was a trek through jungles, arid deserts, and just towering mountains. This is not fiction. This was the reality of the legendary Australian explorer, Francis Bertels. In a few minutes from now, you're about to meet the two legendary explorers that are about to relive this trip in the identical vehicle. And you do not want to miss that. Francis Bertels was armed with nothing but courage and determination and his trusty Bean 14, the Sundowner. In the Sundowner, he carved his way into automotive history. Starting out in London's bustling streets in 1927, Bertels blazed a trail through the heartlands of France southeast, continuing down through Germany, Italy, and Greece. Bertels was his own mechanic and guide, only using the style for navigation. And when the path proved impassable, Bertels made his own paths, a testament to the resilience of the man and the machine. From Athens, Bertels bridged the Mediterranean to Alexandria, weaving his way through the harsh deserts of Palestine and Syria. The desolate landscape presented unique challenges. Unyielding, Bertels pressed on, traversing the punishing deserts of Iraq, Iran and Afghanistan before facing the frosty Zagroff Mountains. Here, a chilling sight awaited him. He came across seven frozen dead bodies, which was a stark reminder of the risks involved with this journey. Emerging from the malaria-infested jungles of Burma and Malaysia, Bertels took to the seas from Singapore to Darwin, Australia. Now on home soil, only the vast and unforgiving Australian outback stood in his path. After nine months of setting out on this treacherous journey, Bertels finally arrived in Melbourne in 1928, marking the first ever overland journey from London to Australia in a motor vehicle and he was greeted by massive crowds. But it doesn't end there. This is where it gets exciting. Inspired by Bertel's spirit, Lang and Bev Kidby are about to relive this epic adventure. They're going to replicate the exact trip Bertels took in the exact replica of the Bean 14 Sundowner. Join us now in Brisbane, Australia, where I'm gonna take you to meet Lang and Bev and find out about their motivations and preparations for this amazing journey, starting on the 1st of April, 2024. Let's go to Brisbane now and meet this legendary couple. The Bean 14. This exact car is about to travel 26,000 kilometers. We're finally here in Brisbane to meet the well-known Australian adventures Lang and Bev Kidby. Hey Lang. Welcome to Brisbane and uh, <laughs> great to have you here. Hey Bev, Hi. you're about to drive 26,000 kilometres in this vintage car across the world. So how's the trip going to work? Do you have multiple drivers or are you going to take turns driving it? Uh, well Bev and I will be together. Uh, I drive most of the time but Bev is quite a capable driver. You'll be the one waving to all the crowd yeah, when you drive by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see it's a bit tight in there. Is there no electronics or coffee holders? <laughs> no, I'm afraid so. Well, I've got a coffee holder sitting beside <laughs> me here. You'll notice the seats are offset. This is built on the design of the old racing cars. Yep. And because the cockpit is so narrow, the driver sits slightly forward of the passenger or the mechanic as it may be and you're able to swing quite freely without rubbing shoulders. Can't see any wires coming up to this windscreen wiper. Right, no, it just gives me something to do when we're going along <laughs> in the rain. I just... Yeah. We'll finish up every day wet, but that's just part and parcel of doing one of these trips. You'll need a bilge pump. Exactly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is for real. This car actually has cruise control. How does it work, Lane? Right? It's a very simple thing. It's just a lever attached to the accelerator, you push it to where you want it, take your hand off, take your foot off, and the car just cruises along the road. So Bev, where are you gonna store all the yummy cakes and drinks and all the water needed? 
Well, uh, we're actually quite lucky uh, with this because there is a reasonable storage area. It's probably as big as your family car boot. Uh, on top of the supplies as well, we've also got this huge long range tank, exactly the same as Bertels has. He had the extra fuel tank in there and that gives us nearly a thousand kilometres range. Here's the main fuel tank, the original fuel tank. So is it petrol or diesel? That's petrol. In the day that was uh, very low quality fuel, uh, this will drink almost any fuel that I can find along the way. Look at the exhaust, it goes all the way off. What would be the speed you could get out of this? The, these were quite a fast car in the day. We're yeah. expecting to cruise on about 80 kilometres an hour which is fast enough not to be a pest in the traffic. How long are you expecting the trip to take if all goes well? It's going to take us about two and a half months to do the whole trip. Uh, we've got shipping from Singapore to Darwin, of course. Here's the olden day temperature gauge. Lang tells me the way it works is a little thermometer goes into the hot water of the radiator. Simple. Let's talk about the part you're going to be relying on the most, the motor. Around about two and a half litre motor, four cylinder motor. Uh, you can see it's got four cylinders, but there are eight spark plugs. A normal car would normally have a distributor and a coil for the spark. This has that, but this also has a backup system of a magneto, oh. which the older veteran cars used to have. Also note there are no belts on this car. Bean decided that they were going to make a positive drive system, so there are huge drive chains inside this case here, driving the fan, the generator and the water pump. How does this suspension system work? Well, it's a fairly standard leaf spring system. They're just friction shock absorbers. They're not oil shock absorbers like a modern one, so they don't work particularly well. The interesting thing about the Bean is they had fabulous brakes, probably some of the best brakes in the world at that stage. Look at the size of them. So apart from the long drive, what are you guys actually really looking forward to on this trip? Well, as Bev said, she loves meeting people and th that's really part and parcel of the whole thing. Yeah. We're promoting Australian history yeah. and one of the greatest overlanders of all time of any nationality and also the kids. Kids are always yeah. excited about this type of motor car and uh, we've found in the past that we always get welcomed everywhere we go. So you're not taking any support crew with you, so how are you going to document this whole trip for people to follow it? Every couple of days, uh, Bev will write quite a long blog and we put it up on our website. So Bev, are you chief media consultant for this trip? Yes, I get, <laughs> well I get to rest most of the day so that's my job at night to uh, put something up on the website. So what is the website so the world can follow you? It's uh, nexthorizon.org. Right. So next-horizon.org. Thanks so much for showing us the Bean 14. Thanks very much for coming up and putting the time in, we appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. And Bev, we look forward to following the adventure on your website. Terrific, thanks a lot.